this piece of birch wood came from um, a birch tree that had been blown down by the wind this winter. And it's still got this cork-like substance uh, inner layer. And it's real, you know that it's not dead. So this is really good because the inner layer is soft. And you can bend it like this without it snapping. So it's very good for the dye that we need. The only thing is, is because it is not fresh off the tree, um, it's harder to remove the outer bark and to peel and to get to the inner bark that we need for the dye. But because we want to take advantage of a tree that has fallen, then we don't need to hurt a, a healthy live tree that is standing. So uh, this is very sharp and we have to be very, very careful. And when I score the outer bark, what I want to do is get this in there really good. So I want to peel the outer bark off because this isn't any good for the, it'll just darken the bath. And that's not what I want to do. I want to get the soft stuff. This is the score that I made right here. And then I also made another score right here. So I'm going to be taking this and peeling that outer bark off. This is what I want to get to because this is what this is the dye that I need. That's what's going to make the dye. <clears throat> so I got to peel, and this is time consuming. You can't do this in one sitting and say, hey, I've got my, Unless, you're, you, unless you find a nice live birch bark that's out there and you can just peel it right off the tree. Perfect. When I'm working with my knife, the sharp point and the sharp part of the knife is always away from me. Because you just never know when your hand is gonna slip. I want to get this off of the branch. So is it the same process with um, a branch that was harvested live? It just is easier? Mm-hmm. It'd probably come out, if this was cut in smaller chunks, and if I soaked it in water, this stuff would probably just peel right off really good. I would soak it in the morning and then after half a day, uh, then I would do this. I can get more of this off up here too. And so are you basically peeling that inside part until it's not cork-like anymore and then you, mm -hmm. you peel it off? Yes. Look at how easily this comes off of here. I'm saving that because I'm going to use it. Who knows what I'm going to use it for? <laughs> Might make some earrings out of it. This is what my pan is looking like. I think I'm just going to use a small pot. To cook this down for dyeing a piece of fish skin and um, a few pieces of grass so that I can have a sample for people. So this knife my Papa Charlie made, it's specifically made for like scoring and cutting the birch bark off of um, this, what I'll be showing you guys. It's a, called a Kiridashi knife. It's beveled on one edge, so it's perfect for um, peeling the, the birch bark off the tree. And so basically what I would do is I like score it. So it's just, and it's really sharp. So. So what we want to do is take off this outer layer. I can kind of get that, and then it should just 
just peel off. So this we got from a fallen tree. The mm -hmm. high winds have blown uh, the tree down right next to our house. So, so it's still green. It's yeah, green. yeah, it's still green. You can see it right there. Did you have this one in the freezer too, or did you? No, no? we just okay. kept it outside in the snow. Okay. <laughs> so it froze, it froze by itself. Yeah. In the snow. Yeah. <laughs> And it preserved it and kept it soft. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Then I'm going to try to get under this layer. The way it feels is really awesome. It's like a nice cork-like feeling. It's really soft. And if you think there's an easier way to do this, step in and uh, totally. show us. Yeah. Well, I mean, like doing it this way is a great way to utilize a fallen tree already. It, and it's the bark sucks in once it dies yes. or mm -hmm. once it falls, so it's harder to get it. But you can use almost like a butter knife with like a sharp knife and just do a line mm -hmm. and then get that butter knife on a live tree if you do it in the spring so you won't kill it. Right. And it will just peel off in a, a strip. Exactly. But. But what you're talking about, like using it for dyeing, this is probably better, right? Because you're splitting it in yes. smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. See how easy that is to peel off of there? So what we're going to do with this is um, bring it to a boil, simmer it. And in Rita's, I was reading Rita's instructions and she said that especially with birch bark when you want to get it to a real beautiful rosy color you let it steep for days which is what i did with the batch that i'm going to bring over here tomorrow you know and i'd like for us to experiment um, with that with the fish skin and then also with the moose skin that you have We are in my grandma's backyard, which is like the primary place where I normally harvest some of the branches for the, get the shavings for making the tanning solution. Um, you can see here that in, on this bush, um, it's an alder and, or no, this is a willow. And this is one that I prune from quite often and um, it's still alive. I only take like the ends of them. You can see on these little ends and pieces, I use this pruner right here. Um, right now is actually like the best time to uh, harvest the the branches because you can see the little buds are coming out. Even next week it would be even be a better time because it'll be bloomed out a little more. So right now it is May. It's just the beginning of May. So pretty much you have to look at your branches wherever you're at to know when is the best time because the buds the, it is different everywhere. Here is uh, in Sun it's a little bit later compared to like Palmer or Anchorage. In this backyard, we have basically willows and um, cottonwoods. You can use, we've tried, you know, willows, alders, um, cottonwood, and it's all, it all works. Like, basically, just get the same thing as, you know, you get a foot, about a foot, so it's easy to work with, and then you can shave it down. But um, all the bark works for making the tannin solution. I like to harvest my willows when the bush is smaller, and we like to take the branch and not the main stock because we want the tree or the bush to live on. I've been trimming some of the willow branches and cottonwood branches out here to harvest and get ready to peel to make tanning solution. Um, here you can see a bunch of little leaf buds on here that I'm trying to trim off with my pr pruners to make shaving the tree branches a little easier for us. And I kind of just want to take these off the branch the buds are really sticky and hard to work around. We're lucky that this alder has been like already fallen here. Now we have a lot of bark that we can work with. And also like these buds that are here, you can tell that this is a freshly fallen tree because there's blooming still. Um, those buds are perfect for using for tanning. I just take the little buds off and I pluck them off and then put them in a in a pot. Start from right here 
and you just want to cut it and I'll probably do about a foot a foot and a half long piece and like you want to get off all these little knots because shaving against you know trying to get around that is really hard so you just want to like take it and it's really simple um, once you like put your hands on it you would be like well it's really easy but um, sometimes the bark can be a little bit more tough to work with if it's older that's why you kind of want it to be fresh and you get all the fresh tannins out of it um, but yeah you want to do this away from you okay. do you want to take all the buds too yeah okay and we can still use the same bark from where the buds were and sometimes just easy enough to just pluck it yeah I'm going to saw through this and then I want to get to the core in here this this is we can use this we can continue to use this but what I'm pulling out from the very center is the soft subs cork like substance and here it is right here all of this in here should not go into your dye or it should not go into your tanning bath because that is sugar and it will ferment your solution and that is something that we don't want to do and sugar will ruin your your uh, dye bath it'll ruin your tanning bath so that is what we want to get rid of and this is how I get rid of it and with larger branches you can use this part of your spoon to scrape it out of that core out of your um, bark so this is everything that we're going to use for tanning with. So here I am picking the these little leaf buds off of this willow we have outside the house. And I kind of just go down each twig or stick and pluck them. I use these gloves just to keep the stickiness from the tree buds off my hands. They get really sticky if you don't wear them and it's hard to wash off the mess. I filled it about two thirds full. What I'm going to use them for is we're going to make um, an olive green dye, but you could also use it to tan salmon skins. Tanning and dyeing the early leaves because the, uh, the plant, the, the leaves have pulled uh, some of the tannin from the, from the stalk into you know, into the into the leaf leaf with the um, willow leaves that we harvested yesterday they were just starting to pop open and that's really a good time to pick them when it's closed and out of the stalk as soon as the leaves open up that is when I like to harvest the leaves I would use them for up to one month from today's date but I wouldn't use them any later than that for tanning with. It makes a really nice dye. These are all full of tannins, which is wonderful. And, um, and we're gonna use them for dyeing fiber. So a lot of, we're gonna be picking a lot of leaves right now. Charlie pointed out something yesterday when we were walking along the uh, path down this way. Um, these will turn a really nice purple color before they fall off. And the first thing that came out of his mouth was, there you go, let's pick these. You can try dyeing it to see if you get a purple color out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be next on my list. I didn't have time to pick all that yesterday. <laughs> 